What's up, guys? I'm Chris. Uh, welcome to VHB Engines, or welcome back. Hopefully, if uh, you've been here before. Okay, so... Um, the much uh, much anticipated, long waited for B20 discussion. But uh, we gotta start this by not talking exactly about maybe what you're expecting to hear right away and uh, maybe crushing some of y'all's hopes and dreams uh, off rip because I think there's been some kind of misconception here. Um, when I'm talking about like budget building or, or you know how much power you can get out of these uh, these engines in a most people think oh cheap you know wrong not cheap at all all right not cheap in the long run like cheap when you're talking about you know maybe buying a used five hundred dollar engine and maybe having problems with it updating and all that stuff because you buy it five hundred bucks plus you got to spend you know if you really want a healthy engine you gotta hope that there's nothing wrong internally. And then, you know, back gaskets and spark plugs, spark plug wires and all that bullshit. So we're talking about um, getting in, in an old tired engine and like and rebuilding it uh, from scratch. Uh, not from scratch necessarily, but rebuilding it, you know, going through and redoing it. All right. So that's the thing here, guys. Uh, you're not going to get really big magical numbers unless you tear into the block. Like you got to get inside, remove some of its fucking guts and shove some new fucking guts in there. You know, I don't need to make an explanatory uh, explanation video saying, oh, you know, like, oh, what can I do to modify my, my engine in a to make some extra power? You know, I don't need to go tell you bolt-ons because any, any fucking basic-ass car enthusiast knows that uh, put a new exhaust on, put a new intake on, make a little bit more power. And, you know, honestly, 9 out of 10 times, you're not even going to notice that power. If you think you notice that power, it's a placebo effect. You're not going to gain a fuck ton of fucking power off just bolting on an exhaust and slapping on an intake. You know, and, and most of the times, too, you guys slap on whatever cheap-ass intake you can get. And, you know, the the restriction from the filter may not be that great. So you're actually, you know, could be losing power. Uh, or you get one of those really short ram intakes where you're sucking a lot of hot air. It's not really making a lot of good power. Uh, honestly, I would say that gutting out the stock intake, if you actually have the box system set up, you know, gutting out the the filters from that and letting that run straight, you know, would probably net you more power than some of these intakes you guys put on your car, just because of the fact that that stock intake, that stock air box, it runs all the way down to the end, you know, to the proper area. It's actually cold air intake, so uh, it just has it's just smaller, tighter space, and the filter, of course, is way is super restrictive. So that's why you're going to make more power upgrading that. But um. Yeah, so there's there's that, you know. Okay, so I should have mentioned this right in the very beginning, but uh, uh, I'll leave a link in the description so you can actually jump forward. If you want to skip past me talking to some of you, you know, talk, if some of you guys aren't, you know, the more basic dudes and you just want to get straight to the horsepower numbers and, and piston swapping out, then you can jump forward to that. But uh, the rest of you guys really need to be talked to. And the main reason why, uh, you know, it came to mind is because, uh, like, I had a DM the other day from a guy, and it was like, I want to make 230 horsepower with my B20. What do I gotta do? I'm like, dude, okay, first off, the fact that you're asking me a question like that on making 230 wheel horsepower with a fucking B20 non VTEC here, that you're you're already you're already telling me that you're a super noob and you don't really know what you're talking about because your expectation levels are just like way through the fucking roof, all right? Uh and this isn't the clown or make fun. This is just saying that, you know, like a lot of you guys are coming in here and I've said this a long time before, like VHB Engines is to show you guys how to do things yourself, you know, and, and, and show you that it's not as difficult as you may think. But at the same time, you still have to do have, you have to have common sense, have to have a good mechanical background, and have to at least know what you're doing and, and what to expect. You know, do your research not only on my channel, although I think my channel at this point comprehensively covers nearly everything you need to learn if you're basic coming in here. Uh, but you also need to go out and like look at dynographs, like fucking scour the internet of dynographs, like search it, uh, search in the horsepower numbers you're and you know you're looking for, and and hit Dino Tune or whatever, and see what people are doing to get there. Uh, for 230 fucking horsepower on a B20, you're talking about fucking uh, most people are doing nitrous uh, supercharger rare or turbo, which is most likely the case. You know, stock B20 boost 230 wheel horsepower. But even then, you know, if you're asking me stuff like that, then that really tells me that you're not really ready for the level of slapping a nitrous kit on there or slapping a fucking turbo kit on there. Because even though, the, you know, that's not as hard as most people would think, you know, it still takes a lot of time and effort because unless you're, unless you're going to fucking buy one up straight up cash, you got to piece one together, you know, slap it to the car, 
you know, and then fucking have it sent out to go get tuned. And you're still going to need to upgrade, you know, your fuel system and shit like that, you know. So it's still, even though that's the easiest way to get that kind of numbers and the best way to get those kind of numbers on this kind of engine, you know, and this covers the, the B18 I did the other day too. You're like, you know, you don't, I'm showing you that you don't have to go VTEC. I'm showing you other options to use what you have and still make decent power. But um, like I said just a minute ago, you don't need an instruction video to tell you, oh, put on a bigger intake, oh, put on a bigger uh, exhaust. And I've said a bunch of times already in horsepower expectations, like what you'd expect to see from bolt-ons in these engines. Like um, the high compression uh, B20 is rated at 250 something horsepower, uh, you know, but that's flywheel rating. So if you put on your bolt-ons and shit like that, you know, and, and you know, get a, a good tune, you're going to see 250 horsepower. And that's a good thing because you've gone, you've pulled out of that area where you're going to make 230, 240 and you're making the two, or I'm not, not 240, 250, fuck, you know, the 150, and you know, you're making 130, 140, now you're making 150 to the wheels, that's not bad, that's a very good start, but if you want to make more than what the factory tells you you're, the B20 should be making already, you need, you need to open it up and get inside, all right, and um, so you're going to need to bump up compression, right, so there are different ranges of pistons that you can easily buy that are, you know, with just a piston swap that'll, um, that'll do this. Now, I'm not going to cover as in-depth on this because this video is probably already going to be long. Um, I'm not going to cover, like, you know, forge rods and all that stuff because when you're looking at that, you're looking at the B18, you can go by the same example I made there and the same reasoning behind it. And if you're worried about B, uh, B20 uh, sleeve integrity, I've already covered that. And I guess I'll leave a link up here for you guys to go and check that out if you want to see a more in-depth opinion on what I say about the B20 and the sleeves. Um, so right off the rip, uh, if you want to bump up compression, you know, you're looking at, um, uh, there's like a, the B16 kind of pistons. Like they're like PR3 type deal that you can put in there and it bumps up compression quite a bit. Now, uh, I don't have the goddamn compression charts in front of me, but like I've also mentioned before too, those aren't gospel. There's not, it's not 100% guarantee what you're gonna, what you're gonna make on the dot. It's just a good idea of how far compression is gonna jump. And from what I remember thinking, you know, from what I remember, uh, like the B20s in the nine, nine, eight area for the high compression one, uh, it bumps up a healthy amount. I want to say high tens or low elevens. That's a big jump in, in compression, right? So. Um, I think it's safe to uh, safe to expect, you know, with full bolt-ons and that modification and healthy tuning uh, with a guy who's competent and knows how to do Honda shit, um, I think it's safe to say, you know, 165, 170, just like I guess you would out of the, the B20 and the B18 bumping with the high compression. Now, the difference being when you bump up this engine, you're also going to get a healthier spike in torque. So even though you might measure out the 170 same like the B18 or in that range, you're going to see a healthier dose of torque as well. So the B20 wins out. Um, now also, you also have the, the Type R, you know, the BCT, uh, the PCT Type R Type uh, B20 pistons. And this is something that I want to try out myself in the future. Um, so with that, with those pistons, uh, you know, in that for the B20, uh, I think um, it's also definitely safe to assume in the, in the 180 horsepower range. Um... Now, the other day, and here, I know we're talking about NAB20, not, we're not talking about VTEC here and shit, but uh, I think the other day I was talking about, like, B20V, not the other day, but a while back, I was talking about the B20V and the LSV and uh, doing NA builds for those and saying when I was talking about the B20V, you know, possibly expect with bolt-ons, cams, and that kind of high-ass uh, compression, maybe as high as 250 or more. And, again, that was, you know, somewhat validated the other day um watching genesis dyno videos and he uh, the guy had a b20v on there that was built and uh, it made like two it made 265 now uh it was also on e5 which is to be expected at that kind of compression range but uh, so 265 horsepower of the wheels um he didn't give full details on the on the you know the fullness of the build but i'm pretty sure head work has been done and everything that you can do to that engine has been done to get those kind of numbers but those kind of numbers are possible but you have to realize guys that when you do these uh if you're trying to get like a you know 200 plus out of an na setup and you're not doing vtech for the b18 or the b20 you're gonna have to spend some money and if you're asking me about milking as much power as you can out of your b20 or b18 without going vtech you know that means you're trying to save money that means you don't have the 500 bucks to buy 
a VTEC head and put it on there. So if you don't have that 500 bucks to build that, uh, to buy that VTEC head and put it on there, then you don't have the kind of money it takes to, to pass, you know, 200, uh, 200 horsepower, even reach 200 horsepower is not necessarily easy without that VTEC power, all right? I'm not saying it can't be done, just saying it's gonna be fucking expensive. And you guys asked me the newbie questions of 230 horsepower, what do I gotta do? You know, you don't have the money for it. Um, now, if there's any of my subscribers on here, they're, you know, they're making that kind of power on those, and, and it's not because of Booster Nitrous, and I'd like to see it. I'd like to see the build, and I'd like to share it. It's something I talk about. <clears throat> I know there's people out there, but generally speaking, the people out there are, you know, they're probably race teams that are trying to meet a certain race class, and, um, you know, for whatever reason, and doing shit like that uh, to make those kind of numbers. But uh, it's, not, it's not something that the everyday guy is going to do to make that kind of shit. All right, um, so, wow, uh, only 11 minutes in, so it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, but I think um, you have a good estimation of what to expect from both these engines. It's going to be very similar. The torque is going to make the big difference there. Um, as far as which one you prefer to go with, uh, it's, it's all on you. Uh, I think um, I, like, I, like, uh, I would like the idea of building the V18 simply because of the fact that it, you know you have more options later on if you want to change the setup without actually tearing the block apart again as opposed to the B20 where you know you're already dealing with something that has a little bit on the weaker side of the sleeves so you're dealing with high compression already and then if you want to throw a boost on that then it's just the chances of a failure are a bit higher so um, yeah I, I don't know I, I like both engines I would like to do both kind of builds but um, I don't know I guess in the end of the day you re you study the videos yourself you make a decision on what you want to do uh, based on whatever information you can find and what I can help to provide you all right, guys, uh, you know, that's it. You know, thanks for watching, I guess. <laughs> I'm going to fucking go and uh, dig through that video, that my, that video playlist I made and see if there's anything else I really want to talk about there. Uh, that budget NA build, I think, is probably out the window at this point because I think I've done talked about that enough. So I'm um, not 100% sure exactly what the next topic is going to be. Uh, feel free to leave uh, oh, um, suggestions in the videos down below. And I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.